So now let us move on to, uh, you know, study chapter two. Chapter two deals with the fundamentals of airlines management. Let me share the slide with you. So in this chapter, we are going to delve into the fundamentals of airline management and the management concepts that are intertwined with airlines management. Now, you will know that management is a science to be strategically imbibed and an art to be executed. Now, I personally believe that you know, general management is a science that has to be strategically imbibed and it is an art that needs to be executed. Management is an art. And it involves planning, coordination, strategizing, and implementation. So thereby it involves a process to achieve a goal. It involves a process of, you know, optimum utilization of resources to achieve a particular goal. Now, management thinkers such as Ron Fleet and Peterson have defined management as the set of activities that are directed at the efficient and you know, effective utilization of resources in the pursuit of one or more goals. Now, this, they were authors, they were management thinkers, that is Vaughan Fleet and Peterson. And when a question comes to you on management or even airlines management, I want you to give me the definitions of management. And you will have to quote, you know, management thinkers and authors, and, you know, and only then will your answer be complete. Well, coming back to this, Karl Marx opined where, where you know, you know, where, Vaughan Fleet and Peter, uh, Peterson spoke about management being, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, where it's, they said that it is a set of activities which is directed uh, at efficient and effective utilization of resources in the pursuit of one or more goals. So the question is, what are these resources? Karl Marx opined that the three main resources that are available in an industry or capital, this you know, money, labor, that is you know, manpower, and land, which includes you know the resources that can be extracted from the land. Now, modern management gurus have included market into the list and have conveyed that the four M's of management are market, money, men, that of course includes women manufacturing, producing, or rolling out products, goods, and services. Contemporary management thinkers, that is today, they have included the fifth M, and they have conveyed that methods adopted also serve as a valuable resource. Thereby, they have adumbrated money, material, methods, manpower, machine, and market are valuable resources in any given industry or even a company. So going back to Warren Fleet's and Peterson's definition, they have defined management as a set of activities directed at the efficient and effective utilization of resources in the pursuit of one or more goals. And what are those resources in, in today's perspective or in today's world, you know, contemporary management thinkers have spoken in terms of five M's that involves or includes money, material and methods, you know, manpower, machine, and the market. So how well you utilize these resources towards the achievement of a, you know, of the organizational goal or the organization's long-term goal, apart from profit maximization, of course, is management. So the concept of management exists, of course, from time immemorial. It is not a new concept at all. You can, you know, date it back to ages and ages. But if you think about it, you know, women in the past centuries, they've imbibed the skill of managing their households from centuries and centuries. It's going on. And men have strategized their household income and family expenditure. So again, that's a management skill. 
that's going on for years together for centuries and centuries and centuries. Now the family is managed or in the earlier days was managed by the elders of the family. So there was there was a set of rules and strategically drawn that was strategically drawn and that had to be followed. Likewise, like how it was in the past, it is even there today. And if you if you you know try to compare it with you know the corporate management, of course, management is an intrinsic part of every sphere of life, be it world of commerce or even families. As rightly applied by Peter Drucker. I mean, he's a father of modern management. Uh, he said that with changes in technology, society evolves, and so does management techniques. Peter Drucker defined management as a multi-purpose organ that manages the business and manages managers and manages workers and work. Some of the definitions of management are, you know, given by Harold Coons, where he said management is the art of getting things done through and with people in formally organized groups, and it is the art of creating an environment where people can perform as individuals and cooperate towards the attainment of group goals. It is the art of removing blocks to such performance by way of efficiency in reaching goals. F. W. Taylor has given a definition of management and said, and has said that it is an art of knowing what to do, when to do and see that it is done in the best and the cheapest way. Thereby, it can be concluded that management is a dynamic, multi-dimensional process aimed at achieving the ultimate desired goal. Now, what about, you know, management by objective? Now, talking about management by objective, just to set the perspective, we need to understand about the organization structure and understand that organization structure, of course, it varies from you know company to company. It depends upon the size of the company. And talking about airlines, of course, the organization structure may vary depending upon the size of the airline. Uh, you know, the, the organization, it's the size of the organization or the organization structure itself, how it is, or whether it operates at a domestic level or international level or both, whether the airlines is operating at a domestic level or just only confined to international level or just both. So the, 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 the general task of planning, organizing, staffing, directing, controlling, and coordinating are performed by the management team. Now, management by objective, which means purposeful leadership to achieve a strategic objective is one of the keys to successful airline management. Talking about management objective, it is also referred to as management by results or MBR. But this is a system where subordinates work in coordination with superiors or, you know, or supervisors or their superiors to achieve the desired objective, you know. And under this principle, the goals of the organization are linked to employee goals. Management objectives are made to meet operational objectives, and then both management and operational objectives are made to meet organizations' long-term objectives. The organizational objectives are linked to the vision and mission of the organization. And here what happens, the team is made aware of the achievable goals of the organizations that can be achieved, that, is that can be strategically achieved, the goals of the organization, and there is unified effort by both, you know, the normal employees as well as the superiors. There's unified effort that is exerted in that direction. And on the other hand, the employee whose performance is noteworthy will be rewarded by the organization. So what happens here? It builds a transparent and a clean work culture on one hand. And, you know, on the other hand, it unclogs communication blocks or, you know, it really obliterates communication barrier. So this is the purpose that MBO or MBR serves. So MBO and MBR is, can, is used or even can be used in the aviation sector or even in airlines. The aviation sector, aviation is a broader concept, but if, if I'm just talking about airlines, so it can be used in airlines as well. So aviation, of course, includes, you know, airlines and even airports and even you know you know th that's it but i'll go to that concept later so let me just talk about airlines for now so airline management levels so generally speaking 
we all know again, the levels of management. What are the levels of management in a company? The levels of management, of course, at the top level, you've got the board. Then you've got the top level management, which comprises of, depending upon the structure, general manager, CEO, etc. Then you'll have the middle level management that is departmental heads. And then you have the lower level management, like, you know, first line managers and supervisors and so on. Now, of course, below them, you know, there are other staff members. Then, now, airlines management includes a series of tasks such as negotiating contracts, basic airline scheduling, airline network planning, aircraft maintenance, recruitment and staffing, and customer service, compliance, licensing between several departments for smooth operations, etc. Authority is delegated to the subordinate managers through the assignment of duties and making them accountable for the accomplishment of the tasks assigned. So all of the above is handled by specific departmental heads who may all report to the general manager of airlines. And the basic duty of the general manager of airline is to ensure the smooth functioning of the airline and the organization, of course, and that the airline's fleet is well maintained in compliance with the relevant regulations. He further also supervises the programming of flights, that is the flight schedules, and confirms the flight schedules devised by the team. He monitors flight schedules. He ensures compliance with the relevant rules of the regulatory bodies. He oversees the human resource needs and approves strategic plan by the human resources department on staffing. Now, the general manager of airline is also his duty, you know, to respond to emergencies such as accidents and get or even solicit reports you know, either he prepares reports and, and he prepares reports based on the reports that he solicits, you know, from the, the, his team members who, you know, goes to the site, checks the, you know, uh, the site of accident, or the, there is a technical team who tell why the accident took place and so on. So then he prepares his final report. Now, he must be involved in constantly also strategizing the improvement of the organization and the airlines in the market. So he has to be instrumental in resolving in-house disputes, if any in-house conflicts and other, inter, uh, other departmental differences. He approves the financial report upon submission of the same from the concerned departmental heads. He coordinates with the stakeholders, that is the shareholders and the higher management. So these are some of the duties of the general manager of airlines. So well, with that, we finish this chapter. The next class will study chapter three. And again, if time permits, chapter four. But you can, you know, just go through your textbook and, you know, just go through chapter three. And, uh, and in fact, I would, you know, really encourage you to revise chapter one and chapter two that we discussed today. And then if you have any questions, you can ask me, you know, during the next class while we are doing chapter three. So that's it for now. Thank you.